Hi, and welcome to this section of the Matrix Algebra Tutor. And in this section, we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about uh, certain sub, uh, subsets of equations uh, that don't turn out to have any solution at all, or in fact, they may turn out to have infinitely many solutions, okay? And those are called inconsistent uh, and dependent systems, okay? So it's a complicating sounding title, but once we get through a few examples, you'll, you'll see with some pictures that I draw on the board here, it's not a big deal, okay? The bottom line is, you gotta understand a little bit of the terminology, okay? When you see something down that says, inconsistent system, that's just code that means there's no solution to the set of equations you're trying to solve, okay? And when you see something that says dependent system, that's code, that means infinitely many solutions. If I had my way, I would rewrite the terminology because these, these words don't make any sense to me. But that's what it means. You either have no solutions at all or infinitely many solutions. Now, even those words themselves might have you scratching your head. How could you have no solution to a set of equations? Or how could you have infinitely many solutions, okay? And we're going to talk about those there. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background motivation first. Um, and then we'll just go from there. So let's begin, okay? Remember back from your early algebra when you first learned about a set of equations, you know, two equations, two unknowns, X and Y, and you were taught how to solve those. You, you've learned now you can use matrices to actually reduce the matri matrices and, and solve the system, but you also learned in the past that you can graph them and find the intersection point of those lines because that's what you first learned how to solve systems of was, was equations in, in X and Y, it's a line, okay? And where those equations cross is the solution. That's what you're trying to find. Any of these systems of equations, really all you're doing is you're trying to find the common intersection point. The point in X and Y, and maybe Z if you have X, Y, and Z, point in X, Y, and, and Z where all of the three equations are common. That is what is the, the solution is. That's graphically what it is. If you were to draw it, it's the common point where they all intersect, okay? So if you remember back from your early, early algebra, what you were taught, and you may or may not remember this, you most likely do remember this, is that just we're not even talking about um, you know three variables here like we've been dealing with these matrices so far. I'm talking about back to algebra one, algebra two, when you were taught how to plot a line. So here's line one, okay? And this line is y is equal to the slope times x plus uh, b. And I'm gonna put m1 here because I'm gonna draw two lines and they're gonna have different slopes. m is the slope, you should all remember that, okay? And then you're also taught that if I give you another line, and this line maybe does something like this, this line is y is equal to m2 times x plus b. Uh, we'll go ahead and put a 2 here, and we'll go ahead and put a 2 here. Just because these equations are totally different. B is different in the equations. The slope is different in the equations. X and Y are just our variables. But basically, you're plotting lines here, okay? Now, if I gave you these two equations, if I filled in numbers for the slope and for the Y-intercept, uh, you could solve that system. And one of the ways that you solve it is by drawing the lines on a graph paper and looking at the intersection point, right? So you would look here. And if this intersection point was at, you know, 3, 4, you would circle this and say this is the solution of the system of equations, okay? That's the solution of the system of equations. Now, the first way that you learned how to solve these things was by drawing them on your paper and figuring it out. You also learned how to do substitution, a couple of other methods, and we've also learned that matrices can be used to solve them as well and kind of keep it nice and compact doing the row reduction and all of that. We've learned about that. Although most of the matrices we've done to this point, uh, we were doing more complicated sets of equations with X and Y and Z because that is much more hard, uh, that's much harder to graph. You, you really can't graph that very easily.